All right. Hi, Nicole. I'm going Hi. to um, ask you to introduce yourself and tell us, like, tell us who you are, where you are in your career, and what you study. Sure. So um, I am in my third year right now of a tenure track position. I'm an assistant professor at Youngstown State University, which is in Northeast Ohio. Um, and I thought I was going someplace where there would be not people coming around me. <laughs> and actually where um, I was actually trying to avoid, I'm fostering cats during the stay-at-home order, and one of them is um, cranky about me being on uh, Zoom. So, um, but sorry, someone just pulled into the parking lot, so I'm gonna trying to go elsewhere. Okay, there we go. Um, and Youngstown is um, halfway between Cleveland and Pittsburgh in Northeast Ohio. And um, my area of study is applied linguistics. Yay. And um, specifically, I do research um, on language learning and literacy, um, frequently with refugee uh, background populations. Interesting. So that's my, that's my spiel. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to ask you some questions. We're here today to talk about the writing roadmap. Um, and I feel like you were maybe one of like the, the original writing roadmap people. I don't know. I can't remember when you joined, but if you can remember, can you tell us why you decided to join the writing roadmap? Sure. It was actually during my first year on the tenure track. Um, although I didn't, confessions, I didn't actually get to all of the work and dig into it until towards the end of the first year. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the reason was because um, I was finding balancing all of the demands of the academic career very challenging. During my PhD, I had had a fellowship and I got to really just sort of live and swim in this research space and I wasn't pulled in so many different directions. Yeah. And, um, and I, I wanted to keep my research going and I'm at a, a, a school where the teaching load is 4-4, four, four, um, which can make research kind of challenging. And I just, I needed some support. So that's why I got into it. Great. Okay. So if you can think back to the roadmap, what was the most impactful part for you? This is the whole reason I wanted to do this oh. because it was module two. Module okay. two has like been the guiding light of my academic life since I did it. Um, so for those who aren't familiar, module two is one where um, we write down all of the things that we're doing and we put them into the buckets of um, research and teaching and service. And it was such, I think I posted on the Facebook page that day, like this was a really big kick in the head. It was such an eye opener for me and it gave me the um, resources and um, data that I needed to advocate for specific changes for myself. Yeah. Um, you know, within my, um, you know, with, you know, within the setting that I'm in. So, um, yeah. And so it's continued, you know, the job isn't the same from semester to semester, year to year. Right. And so as things have changed for me in the last couple of years, I've continued to go back to that and to do it again and to see like, what, what am I doing in terms of balance? What can I say no to, right? And I've become um, very much more comfortable with saying, no, this isn't a match right now. This doesn't match up with the, um, you know, like what I have going forward, like my yeah. vision for going forward, right? Um, and and I've, I've had people actually comment on how unusual it is for someone in their second and third year to be able to say, um, like, oh, you have such a clear understanding of what is yes and what is no, and it's impressive that you're already comfortable saying no. Yes. Yes, yeah. I love that because I think so many people pre-tenure are like, I can't, I can't rock the boat. I can't say no to things because then I won't get tenure. And, you know, there's another side to that, which is that when you stand up to your, for yourself and when you kind of know clearly where you want to go, you actually earn the respect of people around you. So I'm so glad that, and you do that. You're doing that right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, um, I think, you know, I think if it's done in ways that are like respectful and 
you know, I feel like having the data about how I spend my time is very helpful. So it's not just like, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Right. No, it's, it's actually like, you know, I have a very good sense of where my time is going. And, um, and I, um, it, it gave me also the, um, sort of the, I don't know, the courage, I guess, Mm -hmm. to, um, have designated writing times at my office and to close my office door and to put a sign on my door that says, I'm writing right now. Please do not disturb until 3 PM or send me an email Mm -hmm. or, and I changed the time or whatever. And like, it was like, you know, at a 4-4 teaching institution where people tend to talk about teaching a lot more and administrative things a lot more than research, at least, you know, in my circles, that was kind of revolutionary. And people were like, wow, that's good. Like you're focusing on your right. That's good. Way to go. And Yeah. um, yeah, so it's, it's been good. I love that. Fantastic. All right. So Maybe that's one of the things, but um, the next question I have for you is, what is something that you learned in the roadmap that you use like frequently, like every day, every week, every month, like something that you go back to and use? Um, that's a really good question. I feel like there's so many different pieces that have been incorporated. I think now, and I've also been on this journey and doing other things with you, Kathy. Right. And so if yeah. what, I'm, what I'm saying isn't part of the roadmap, please tell me. No, it's okay. <laughs> So, so yeah, Nicole is also has, was in our original Amplify cohort. So that was, she's, um, she's working with us. <laughs> so is the ideal week, is that part of the writing roadmap? Um, I don't know either. I can't remember, <laughs> but keep going. Talk about the ideal week. It's fine. So the ideal, the ideal week yeah. is where, um, you are deciding like in an ideal week, <laughs> here are the chunks of time that I'm going to spend and how I'm going to spend them, right? So if I'm teaching, you know, like I teach in the evenings, right? So if I'm Mm -hmm. teaching Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the evenings at four o'clock, then I'm going to prep from this time to this time and I'm going to grade from this time to this time. And I'm only, I'm only going to check email from this time to this time. Um, That that structure has been very helpful for me. It was crucial during stay at home. Yeah during the stay at home orders, I just, and, and I, and I revisit it, you know, I, I literally like get up in the morning and I look at like, what is my ideal day? Today is Wednesday. What does Wednesday entail? (laughs) Um, and of course I change it every semester and probably usually, uh, two to four weeks into a semester, I'll change it again because it'll, it'll become more clear to me what that semester is going to look like. Um, I think, making, um, coming to the realization that the writing, (laughs) like 50 to 70% of my battle with like, quote unquote, finding time to write is actually taming all of the other lions. Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like, so like not allowing email to rule my day. Yep. And to, you know, set people up for the expectation, like Nicole's email happens at 3 PM. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I no longer get up and check email right away. I get up, I do things, I do writing, I do some other work and email is happening later on in the day. And the people who need to get a hold of me, if there's a crisis can get a hold of me if there's a crisis right. in a different way. Right. A hundred percent. Yay. That's great. Cause we do teach yeah. the email thing in the roadmap. So that's good. And I can't remember if ideal weeks in the roadmap, but I'm going to go check if it's not, we'll probably put it in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Um, so how did the writing roadmap change your writing and publication process? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I think I'm going to say the same things I've already said mm-hmm. for me. It's really a lot about process and I think just like feeling empowered with all of those littler pieces yeah. and realizing that it's like, I think I went, okay, pr- I think the roadmap helped me go from feeling like things were constantly coming at me and I kind of just had to figure out how to gather them and how to put them in the baskets and how to figure it all out yeah. to th- things are coming at me um, just because they're coming doesn't mean I have to catch them. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you know, figure out what you're going to catch and figure out what you're going to let go. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. And I just, I feel like 
like when I said like, you know, taming all the other lions, yeah. I, th I feel like that was so empowering that I started to feel like, yes, I can do this. Yes. And when I started to feel like, yes, I can do this, that translated into more confidence in my writing. It translated into, I think, a stronger voice in my writing, mm. which is really unusual. I, I, I don't know if it's unusual, but like to me, I wouldn't, lot, I wouldn't think of that. Right, right. right. Um, yeah. That is beautiful. That confidence is like, that's one of those priceless things that you, you know, like you, and it's hard to engineer that. So I'm so happy to hear that the process of like going through the roadmap helped to build that, com <clears throat> that confidence that comes out in your writing. I mean, that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. So the last question is who would you recommend the roadmap to? Everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not very helpful. Um, I think, you know, I found so many really useful tools that I know that I, you know, I go back to it frequently. Yeah, like there's yeah. things that I, that I wasn't ready to take up when I originally did it that I feel like I'm, you know, might be ready to take up later um, or that I have taken up later because there's a lot to do all at once. And I know that developing habits takes a lot of time. And so yeah. I was trying to like, what are the most crucial habits for me to develop right now? So it, it seems like, it seems like anyone who feels overwhelmed yeah. by writing, anyone who feels like the writing is constantly going to the bottom of the pile. Yes. I, I, I felt like during my first year that I was losing my edge as a researcher and as a writer and as a critical thinker. Mm -hmm. And, and I was like, I'm not willing to lose that edge, you know? If I even ever really had one. I mean, that was probably my own imagination. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I just kind of felt like, you know, it's a muscle, right? Yes. And, and like the muscle was wasting, it felt like it was wasting away. Yeah. So yeah. I guess anyone who, who feels like this, this writing and publishing and research and not just the writing, but like the reading that goes into the writing and the thinking that goes into the writing and the, the outlining and the understanding your pipeline and where things are in the pipeline and anyone who feels like it's constantly at the bottom of the barrel and then they feel like they're only going to catch up over breaks. Huh. Like if that's yeah. your, if that's your pattern, get the writing roadmap and figure out how to have your weekends back and figure yeah. out how to have like a week long vacation, which I hadn't had for like 10 years, you know, like it's, it's, and it's, and, 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 and learn that not every semester is going to be the stellar writing semester anyway. And like, <laughs> be okay with that. Like, yeah. I mean, it makes it sound like I've got all these things figured out, but like, I don't really, like I still sometimes work on the weekends and there's, there's ebb and flow, but, but I feel like I'm closer to where I want to be now. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Nicole, I don't want to take up any of your, more of your time. I'm sending <laughs> you the virtual internet hugs. And um, thank you so, so much. And I'll see you on the interweb. Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye. Sounds great. Bye-bye.